소리 외쳐다 있습니다. Every day they came back and put me back in this chair. The thing that had been so easy to reach just a few short weeks before now was impossible, or there were steps in my way. A whole world filled with impossibilities, but every day I went back out in the gymnasium, and every day Beverly was waiting for me. Beverly was my physical therapist. Pretty sure that she had once been a Marine Corps drill instructor. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure. Meanest, toughest woman that I've ever loved. Every day she had a list of five impossible things for me to do. And every day at the end of the day, there were five less impossible things for me to do. Beverly wanted me to learn how to transfer, however. She wanted me to learn how to transfer onto the couch. Now you have to learn how to transfer, as I'm sure you all can understand. If, if you don't like sleeping in the wheelchair, it's a good idea to learn how to transfer into bed. Transferring into a bathtub. I've found women now get closer to me that have learned how to transfer into the bathtub. So that's, that's kind of a good thing. Uh, <laughs> transferring onto car seats, airplane seats, all are very useful in my life. So transferring. But the couch is stupid. And here's why you're going to be on my side when I explain to you. The couch is lower than the wheelchair. You can fall onto the couch. That's not the hard part. It's getting back off the couch, because when you push against the cushion, what does the cushion do? <laughs> and I wasn't going to do it, and she couldn't make me. <laughs> Beverly came over. Grandma Mitchell, there's one more thing. I'm not going to do it, Beverly. It's stupid. You can't make me. <laughs> Mitchell, calm yourself. Relax. Mitchell, have you ever considered the fact there's probably two ways you're going to get close to your future mate? One is going to be next to her in bed. One is going to be sitting next to her on the couch. The couch is probably going to come first. <laughs> Five minutes, five minutes, on the couch, off the couch, on the couch, off the couch. So the question is, what transfer are you avoiding? What transfer are you putting off? Oh boy, Mitchell, this was fun right up until now. We didn't, we, we liked it up until now. We all have them. Most of us are avoiding them. If you leave this room today the way you came in this room today, then the question is, why did you come in this room today? I'm not saying it's easy. If it were easy, you would have done it. But think about it. Because now might be a really good time to begin. I tell people again and again and again that you don't have to use these obstacles as an excuse to stop, to fail. You can use them as an excuse to succeed, to, to learn a new way to do something. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be burned or paralyzed to have big things happen, because a lot of us have big things happen. Mitchell's life is an example of the title of his book. It's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it. He's one of my dearest friends. His name is W. Mitchell. And he has a message for you that he's lived that I'm sure you will not forget. He's an example that I use in my life, somebody that inspires me because he's lived this. And that is there are many people who've been given everything, absolutely everything. And then there are these people that life is taking a baseball bat to. You know, they have not been treated well by life. They've had unbelievable difficulties. Unbelievable challenges. My friend W. Mitchell, you'll hear from at the end of the day, is one of those people, and yet they come out being one of the people that inspire you most, one of the people that seem to have this level of joy and fulfillment, and wherever they go, they touch people. Here we are. We're in Miami. We're in this room, which proves you've done an enormous amount in your lives, right, to achieve this level of success. I mean, you are not, I was trying to figure this out this morning at breakfast, you are not the only ones in the world that would like this job, right? I mean, this is good stuff. And you're some of the very, very best in your field. So you're not people that would be out of work tomorrow if, 
if your fortune's changed. So what have we done? All the things, all the, all the rungs on the ladder that we've reached for. I mean, big stretches, big pulls, sometimes kind of scary. And we've done all of that, and we keep reaching, but what is it that made us do that? And what is it that's going to make us reach for the next rung? Is it the power that together all of us have? Is it our ability and flexibility and adaptability? And our willingness to embrace change and be the very best we can be? I think that's been the secret of my life. And when I am the very best, and when I have climbed out of my mental wheelchairs and dealt with some of my internal scars, it's been because of that willingness to learn a new transfer. Sometimes it's not fun, sometimes it's not easy. It's life. Life has potholes. Life has bridges out. Life has detours. A friend of mine from the National Speakers Association told me that the truly successful person in life who is one who can enjoy the scenery on a detour. Anybody ever been on a detour in this room? I've been on lots of them in life. And it's amazing what can happen sometimes when we choose how we experience the detours. I got out of Craig Hospital and went back home to Crested Butte, and two years later they elected me to be their mayor. Can you imagine that? I'll tell you what a great honor to be the, whether you're the Lord Mayor of Sydney or the, the, the Mayor of, uh, of uh, Cape Town or whether you're the Mayor of Crested Butte, Colorado. It's a great honor. Now, there were a few people that complained. They said I was overpaid at $25 a month. That's true. I, I generally had tickets put on their windows the next morning, you know. I had a, a little bit of power as a small town mayor. And, and we saved a mountain along the way. Yeah, saved a mountain along the way. I became the mayor who saved a mountain. Now, you know, you guys... I don't know how impressed you were before now, but I bet you're real impressed now. I mean, <laughs> guy saved a mountain, that's pretty cool. And I have a headline that I could show you that says, Mitchell's the mayor who saved a mountain. It's not true, but I have the headline. <laughs> yeah. You see, it was a community that saved a mountain. It was the entire town of Crested Butte, Colorado that saved the mountain. I got to be the mayor, I got to be the leader, I got to be the guy out in front. But as David would be the first one to tell you, he is only as good as his team who has the power to work together. After about two months, the plastic surgeon came to see me. He wanted to talk to me about my face. He said, Mitchell, literally, your face has been burned off. What, what did you look like before the fire? Could you describe yourself? Or maybe someone from home could bring in a photograph? And I couldn't remember any pictures from home specifically. But Nulon Shaw, one of my other wonderful nurses, Florence Nightingale-like people, remembered my wallet had survived the fire and dug it out of the drawer. And of course, the doctor rummaged through it. And naturally, the first thing he came across was the license. And he, and he pulled it out. And he looked at it for a moment or two. When he looked up at me one more time, I was really wondering what was in his mind. You probably are aware they don't have mirrors in burn patients' rooms. I hadn't seen myself yet. I had no idea of what I looked like. And finally, he took one last long look at the driver's license. Shook his head and said, God, I know we can do better than this. <laughs> and they did. He's known as the man who would not be defeated. And I saw another friend of mine back here who did not speak to you today, but often speaks at these power within events. His name is W. Mitchell, and he lives in Santa Barbara. And 
he, um, we've been friends for 25 years. First time we ever met, he was the mayor of the vast metropolis of Crested Butte, Colorado. So I'll tell you a story about W. Mitchell. Uh, he navigates his life in a wheelchair. After several plastic surgeries, he still has a lot of scars on his face. He doesn't have any fingers left on either hand. When I met him, he was a mayor. And we were talking when I said, how do you deal with this, all this? And he said, well, you know, before I was injured, there were 10,000 things I could do with my life. And this injury was pretty tough. But when I really thought about it, it only took away about 1,000 of those things. So I have a choice. I can spend the rest of my life feeling sorry for myself because of the 1,000 things that are gone, or I could spend the rest of my life feeling good about the 9,000 things that are still out there that I can do. I choose the 9,000. That's what the world has to do now. Mitchell has moved and inspired more than 60 million people with his personal message of change and renewal. It's not what happens to you, it's what you do about it. In addition to Mitchell's work as a TV host, the co-founding chairman of Vermont Castings is a respected author, a commercial pilot, and former vice chair of the National Parks and Conservation Association. Mitchell has been invited to speak to groups in nearly every continent, including countries from South Africa to Singapore, and Germany to Mauritius, as well as almost every state and province in North America. Mitchell shares his message with audiences about breaking down prison walls and learning to take responsibility for change. And what John and his leadership team have invited me to do to wrap up this meeting today is to come here and help stage a jailbreak. To use some of the tools, some of the keys, many of which we already possess and yet don't always use to break out of our mental prisons, to unleash that enormous talent and creativity that sometimes gets put aside a little bit because every day we have to do what we have to do just to get through the day. Backstage, John asked me to remind you what he said just a moment ago, that it's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it, because stuff happens. You see, somewhere along those streets of San Francisco, I learned one of the most powerful lessons, one of the most powerful tools, one of the most powerful keys that we could ever have in our lives and it's old and it's simple and you've heard it a thousand times and some people are prone to say well come on Mitchell tell us some new stuff we want a lot of new stuff you know we're ready to go we're hot to trot Mark Twain said we can't remember everything we know we need to be reminded the lesson that I learned was what you focus on in life is what you get back what you concentrate on is who you become. It is that simple. Guaranteed success, you make $2 billion in a week? No, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. Guaranteed that you will be much stronger, much better, much more successful, both personally and professionally, if you put quality in, as opposed to garbage. Money back, guaranteed. To say that W. Mitchell is an extraordinary man is an understatement. He has looked into corners of the human experience that few of us ever see, and emerged with a vision of life that is full of light, humor, and insight. W. Mitchell proves quite vividly that it doesn't matter what advantages or disadvantages you were born with, it's not the conditions or the externals of your life that will determine your destiny. What matters is what decisions you make about how your life is going to be. The decisions that will write the story of your destiny. And I say to people, I'm not exceptional. I'm not phenomenal. I, I am as much as any of us are. But I'm not this one-of-a-kind person. There's never been another one like Mitchell. I'm an ordinary person in an amazing situation who has chosen to find a lot of good in it.